So welcome back to Optimize Health, where we're making easy, healthy, and delicious meals. Today we're continuing on our series of weight loss support information videos. This is a follow-up from the recent video talking about unavoidable ingredients that we need these biohacks to help to prevent the sabotaging of our weight loss and our optimal health goals. And I want to get into some ways to easily uh, approach our daily habits and try to mitigate production of uric acid, um, fructose, and as well as uh, lowering our uh, blood salt to appropriate levels if, if it potentially could be higher than it should be. So some basic things, um, but keep going back to, to some of the basics because they're, they're critical. Sleep quality is an issue when it you should talk to your doctor, healthcare provider, or veterinarian to see if any of these recipes, suggestions, or contents of these videos are right for you. Nothing contained in these videos are intended to be taken as medical advice. Use at your own risk. When it comes to uric acid production, sleep apnea is a, a contributing factor to the body creating more uric acid. So that obviously we need to address whatever um, issues we're having with sleep. I'd be happy to go into that in more detail with you individually. It can be a, an individual you know, um, issue that, that requires some specific uh, you know, solutions for that. Um, hydration is a really big one, especially when it comes to metabolism. And that's a big, you know, just blanket and umbrella term for a lot of things, but we're talking more specifically about how salt can cause glucose to be converted to fructose in the body. And when we're not hydrated or we become dehydrated, we are gonna have increase in the salt in our blood and the body's gonna start using glucose to convert to fructose to try to in enact some of these mechanisms like for example, clamping down on the blood vessels. Fructose is going to, to inhibit nitric oxide production. It's gonna cause our blood vessels to constrict a little bit. It's gonna cause hypertension. And when you have low, low blood volume, you often have trouble keeping your blood pressure. So that's part of why that mechanism exists for survival. Um, but we don't necessarily need that. If we have access to water, we need to try to keep hydrated and stay ahead of that issue and, and stay hydrated before that becomes an issue. So during workouts and um, before, you know, before and during and after workouts, making sure we're hydrated, starting our day out with enough hydration after overnight being uh, somewhat dehydrated from not having intake. I didn't want people to be worried about appropriate electrolyte utilization whether they're sweating from temperatures outside or they're sweating from exercising or both together, when you're consuming electrolytes along with the fluid, so in like a, a water electrolyte solution, you shouldn't be concerned about having, you know, about taking in salt when your body uh, needs it at that time. And it should, you know, should be balanced so that you're not triggering this excess sodium level and the fructose, you know, cascade um, of that metabolite production. Some really helpful tips as far as diet and supplementation goes to lower our, our uric acid levels. Helpful foods include tart cherries, red onion, artichoke, and asparagus. And a really easy supplement to add in is vitamin C because vitamin C enhances excretion of uric acid and also will decrease oxidative stress and the collateral damage from the inflammation that uric acid has set into motion. Another thing, especially for our ladies and our perimenopausal and menopausal audience, is that estrogen decreases uric acid. So it's another reason to, to look into options if you're looking at hormone replacement therapies and just some of those many benefits that women can have and not needlessly suffering from symptoms of loss of a hormone that they've had their whole lives that in, in, impacts their entire body and, and every system. So I just wanted to share these um, little tips with you guys. 
hopefully we'll be able to help keep our uric acid levels low and our salt levels within appropriate range and optimize our wellness as well as uh, if we have some weight loss goals that should help to get us over any sort of plateau. So if you have specific questions, um, feel free to reach out individually or you know leave a comment and please share if you think someone could benefit from hearing this information and please like and subscribe. Thank you.